Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. Today I will be looking at adding a visualizer to your Microsoft Teams online lesson setup. So if you have one of these kicking around your classroom or in a cupboard somewhere at school, go grab it before you head home this evening and I'll show you how you can easily incorporate it into your online lessons. Now, my school already closed to students earlier this week, so I've already been making use of Microsoft Teams to set up meetings between myself and my students and to live stream my lessons to them at home. I'm going to assume in this video that you already know how to set up a live lesson in Teams. If you don't, go watch this video first and it will guide you through the setup process step by step. Just tap the link above and it will take you straight to the video. If you've already watched that one and you're here for more, you're clearly finding my videos helpful, so why not subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so that you get notified when I upload my next video full of top tips to help you with your new life as an online teacher. Now visualizers were all the rage a few years ago and most schools got quite a few of them kicking around the building. Uh, now there are two types, I think. Uh, there are very old ones that have a VGA socket that you have to daisy chain your computer to. Uh, and then into your projector uh, but the other ones uh, and the ones that you're looking for really are the ones that have got a USB socket on the end of it okay so you want a visualizer with a USB because that one will you can feed the signal directly into your computer so all you got to do is plug it into your computer uh, and then you should be able to use that as one of your cameras then in Teams so here's my setup then I've got my laptop uh, next to it I've got a exam paper that I'm going to go through and that's sitting underneath my visualizer which is then connected to my PC via the USB socket. Okay and you can see on the screen it's already showing um, I've already got it plugged in and ready to go. So let's have a look in Teams now and see what it looks like there. Okay so we're in Teams now and you can see we're in the lobby just before the meeting starts. Now up here we can turn the camera on and off, but actually I'm going to go and click over here to the settings. It's going to pull out this side panel for device settings. And coming down here to camera, you can see I've got my front and back facing camera, but then I've also got this extra one, which is going to be my visualizer. Okay, let's turn that on. You can see that I'm I'm getting the the, the screen captured. So let's start the meeting. I'll, so I'll see it in full screen. If you decide later on you want to switch back to your camera, you can just go back to the, the settings at any time and switch between uh, your cameras. So you can turn the front facing camera back on. And then switch back to the visualizer, it's no problem. Now you notice what's on the screen for me is back to front and this totally threw me when I first plugged it in I, had, I was running around looking for the options to flip it back round again and there isn't any. Uh, so you might think well what's the use of uh, presenting your screen backwards uh, but actually it only appears this way around for you as the presenter. On the, the screens of the people who are viewing the lesson it will appear the right way around. Now you might wonder why that is and it's to do with the fact that when you use a webcam for uh, these sorts of activities uh, it always shows you the horizontal inverse of your image so when you look left uh, your image will look in the same direction as you and not in the opposite direction. So it always does that for uh, these sorts of cameras that you get in, um, in these sorts of, of online meetings. It's just a little bit curious uh, when you're not presenting um, a picture of yourself, you're actually picking up the image from the from the webcam. So if you can deal with that, uh, it's perfectly fine. I mean, you, you know, you just need to look at what's on your desk rather than what's on your screen, and it should all be fine. Okay. Finally, in my last video, I was asked by Ismail Sarani uh, if it was possible to zoom on a teacher and have him be in most of the screen. Uh, well. Yes, Ismail, it is possible. Um, all you need to do is open up the people side panel, scroll down to uh, the person you want to be full screened and click on the three little epsilons at the end of his name and select pin. Uh, that will full, full screen that individual. Uh, and obviously if you are doing a, a visualizer presentation like that uh, or you're sharing your screen, 
that's a, often a very good way of, of making sure that the, the viewers can see the screen and the details on the screen very well. Okay. Well, I hope you've seen from this video how easy it is to take an old visualizer from your classroom and repurpose it to add extra functionality to your remote learning setup at home. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. And why not subscribe to my channel so you get notified of any future uploads. Check out this playlist above for more remote learning ideas. Or why not have a look at some of these videos for some more ideas for remote learning. Look up yourselves, keep your hands clean, and I'll see you on the next video.